Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's between the ropes time. That's right. That's right. Your one-stop shop for all of your SmackDown review needs. Join me. Joining me, as always, is my tag team partner and good buddy, Jeff Huffman. What's going on, my friend? I'm, uh, I'm doing good. A little upset because I just spilled my water, but yeah, yeah that, that's okay. That. Flipping a baseball, you spill a water. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> How was your Christmas, buddy? How was your holiday season? I had a solid Christmas. How about you? Not bad. Basically, the best Christmas I've ever had in my life, just with my kid. Really? And my, yeah, oh my God, yeah. I tell this great story. I, I put it out yesterday about my uh, German-Russian Christmas that I had. Christmas mm. Eve, actually. Absolutely fucking insane. It was so good, I don't remember most of it. That usually means you probably had a good time. Yeah, and I didn't take my pants off. Which is a, a good thing because usually yeah. when I get drunk, the pants are the first thing that goes. <laughs> so the pants didn't come off. I'm very proud of that. My wife's very proud of that. So it was a, it was a good night. It was a good night. A very, very good night. But we are here to talk about Smack Diddly Down. Did you watch? I did watch. You did watch. First impressions, what did you think? It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, you know, nothing really happened, but there was nothing that made me want to turn it off. So. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was. Uh, I watched it this morning. This SmackDown was, I believe, recorded like about 10 days ago. It was recorded before Monday Night Raw was even shown. Because I remember reading these spoilers like a week and a half ago. Uh, they did that so pe they wouldn't have to, you know, run everybody out on Christmas and stuff, so. So that was kind of cool of them. Uh, but it, it, like I said, it wasn't that bad. It, it wasn't great, but there are some things I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump off at the beginning. Hulk Hogan comes out for uh, his second consecutive uh, GM gig. Um, this one was worse than he was on Raw. Oh, yeah, he was actually surprisingly uh, uh, pretty good on Monday. He was really good on Monday, I thought. I, I enjoyed him, but... Here he was not as good, and the, I don't know. Maybe I just my audio was fucked up. I don't know, but the crowd didn't seem to give a shit. Not really. They were uh, they were into the uh, they were into Roman Reigns. Yeah, well, okay, they're always into Roman Reigns. My God, he's Roman Reigns. What we're gonna do is this guy's the cousin of the Rock, and he's gonna be the next John Cena fucking Vince. Yeah, so Hogan comes out and he does the same old same old talking about memory lane, blah blah blah. Boom, here, out comes Seth Rollins, interrupts he, and he basically says the exact same shit. He says every time he picks up the mic, I am the future, this is my ring, this is my business. Mm -hmm. and how many times did he say, Hogan, you do not belong in this ring anymore? I counted at least four times. I was going to say maybe three. Hey, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, he kept saying it. And, you know, overall, I didn't even think the promo was bad, but he repeats himself a lot. Mm -mm. He, he, he really does. I didn't think it was a terrible promo. No. Uh, but, you know, it certainly wasn't good. Then Ziggler comes out, and I'm starting to understand why it has taken so long for Ziggler to get the push that he's gotten because the guy can't talk. I don't give a fuck with anybody. Anybody really. wants to try to argue with me and tell me that he can cut? No, he can't talk. He, he's not a good promo guy. And Jeff just ran away. And now Jeff's back. Yeah, I'm back. What'd you leave. do? I closed my door. Oh, okay. Uh, what did you What did you think of this weird small promo from Ziggler? And, and am I wrong? Do you think the guy is a good talker? Because I don't see it. I don't think he's I don't think he's horrible, but he's he's definitely he definitely needs some improvement. He, I mean, he's not a Roman Reigns on the mic. No, he's much no. No, he's he's, uh, he's much better than Reigns, but uh, you know he he still needs some work on that. It's interesting you said that because I enjoyed Reigns' little spiel more than I That's did true. fucking I did. Ziggler tonight. I I did like Reigns' little thing. Kept it short to the point. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. That's what he needs to do. Uh, the line that he said about, uh, I'll punch you in the mouth in front of your wife and uh, wife and kids there. I thought that was a great line. Yeah. That was a great line. That's exactly what they need to do with him. Uh, but Ziggler, it's just like, I don't know. You know. 
I kind of I, I compare him because of his athletic ability and his entering ability to AJ Styles a lot. And now, not that they wrestle the same type of style. Don't blow me up, fucking uh, internet wrestling community. What I mean by that is they're both amazing in, in-ring guys who just can't fucking speak a lick. AJ, because he's a goddamn country bumpkin. And Dolph, I have no fucking idea. But there had to be a reason why he was part of the Spirit Squad, right? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I just, uh, the guy just can't. He, he's not good on the mic. And I think that has to do with, as much as anything else, it has to be why he has not gotten that main event push. I think that's got to be part of it. It's got to be. Unless I'm wrong and they just hate Ziggler. That's possible, too. I don't know. Or both. It's, or both. Or both. So uh, Seth Rollins, uh, now they're all in the ring talking, blah, blah, blah. Hulk, Hulk Hogan's like, okay, now what you going to do when they run wild on you? And Big Show comes out. And Big Show's going to knock out everybody. Reigns comes out. Reigns is going to knock out Big Show. Okay, great. So they completely set up a uh, tag team match. You would think Teddy Long was out there, but he wasn't. Set up a tag team match, which I think is done to, to protect uh, Roman Reigns more than anything else. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so we get that for later on, which isn't so bad. The, the segment went on a little bit long, but it wasn't that horrible. No. No. So next out is uh, Ryback and Kane, and they're still having little fights. We knew that this was not going to be a very good match or a very long match, which it was not. And uh, we also knew that Rusev was going to come out, which he did. And he slaps on the accolade. Something I noticed about Rusev tonight. This is the first time I've noticed this about him. Twice during the show, he deliberately, he, the first time, he did not listen to Lana as she's telling him to take off the, the accolade. Mm-hmm. She, she gave him the cue to take I it off like too. three times. He didn't do it. And then later on in his match that I'll talk about in a moment, he puts on the accolade and he says his own Rusev crush. He didn't wait mm. for Lana to do it. Are they teasing something for the future? Are, is Lana leaving? Possibly. Possibly. Possibly, I don't know what the deal with that is. You know, WWE thinks we're stupid most of the time. So, yeah. but I'm not crazy. You noticed that too, right? Uh, I definitely noticed the uh, the first one. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really pick up on the second one, but I thought I'll go back and watch it. Because she told but, him like two or three times, you know, and he was just like, "Nope, bitch, I'm gonna kill this guy." So I, I just thought maybe that that could maybe it was nothing, but I thought it could be interesting because yeah. he's always pretty much obeyed everything she said. So. I don't know. Ryback gets the win over Kane, then, like I said, gets put in the accolade and does the little pass out gimmick. Who gives, who gives a crap? Okay. Uh, <laughs> after the commercial break, Hogan come come goes and confronts Rusev, and he says, "You're gonna defend the U.S. title, brother. Well, let me tell you something, dude. You can't just attack people, brother." And then he calls fucking what's her name, sister. Yeah, Lana. God, I, I love – I'd wear her like a fucking cheap suit. I swear to God. Uh, so he, but he doesn't tell anybody who Rusev will be taking on for the U.S. title. I thought with all the mystery that it would be a really good spot to take the title off of Rusev, but I quickly mm-hmm. came to my senses and realized it's WWE Smackdown. is not going to – it's SmackDown. They're not doing that, especially on a taped, taped broadcast. So what would you think of the, uh, the work between Rusev and Hogan? Eh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Naomi and Alicia Fox out next. Uh, two faces, because Alicia is now a face, and Naomi's doing her work. Mm-hmm. Not a bad match. No. And what I want to talk about from this match specifically is I did a video earlier about the power struggle between Triple H and Vince McMahon. I also talked about Vince's brass ring comments and how I think he was 100% right. And Naomi is a prime example of what I was talking about. Yes, dude, some wrestlers get booked in bad spots where they only get two or three minutes, whatever. Mm. It is up to you to do what you do in those two, three minutes. Look what Naomi did in this match. She did a whole bunch of high-risk uh, maneuvers, and finally she hit them, too. 
You know, yeah. they, they weren't sloppy, and she made the most of her time. And she's been doing this over the past month. And look, she's getting a push to the mid card. She's in a fucking cool little angle with the Miz and Jimmy Uso and all this stuff. And there's some intrigue and shit. If you fucking make them take notice of you, you're gonna get noticed. And they're good things ha- will happen. They're gonna have to push you like Daniel Bryan. Yes, exactly. And what I try, what I tried to talk about on the video earlier, what some people don't seem to understand, and I'm not saying it's a good thing, but Vince sticks to his formula that has made him money forever, mm-hmm. over uh, until somebody puts a gun to his head, until a Daniel Bryan puts a gun to his head, until Dolph Ziggler, until Stone Cold Steve Austin, until Shawn Michaels, until these guys puts a gun to his head and says, "I can make you more money." Until that happens, he's going to stick with his giants. He's going to stick with the, the, the Rybacks. He's going to stick with the Big Shows, the Andres, the Hulk Hogans, the Ultimate Warriors. That's who he's going to stick with because they consistently make money. Roman Reigns, fucking John Cena, they make money. We may not like it. It may piss us off. It might insult us as wrestling fans. But the reality is they will always be draws. And you yeah. can't blame him for that. No, yep. rightfully so. I mean, would you do this? You would do the same thing, wouldn't you? Absolutely. You know, somebody else was uh, making comments about how you know how WWE is so fucking done and all this shit. Something I wanted to uh, to bring up. the uh, The last big pay per view was Survivor Series, and Joe Cronin did a video about this where Survivor St- Survivor Series still did something ridiculous, like one hundred and fifty thousand pay per view buys. Still still sold 150,000 pay-per-view buys, even though it was a free pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. So off of that, which was a free pay-per-view, they still sold that many. That was $7.5 million if, uh, the, because the, it's, I rounded it, it's 50 bucks. You know, that's what, it, that's what you pay for. Yeah. $7.5 million, man. Not then too bad. You, no, not a bad at all. Then you take into consideration that the last known good number that we knew on the network was 750000 I think it's actually more than that, but that was the last good number that we knew about. And you go $10 a month. That's another $7.5 million. So, based off those fucking figures, based off those goddamn figures for Survivor Series, they made $15 million off of television alone. WWE's doing fine, kids. They're doing fine. Okay? Don't get it fucking twisted. And who knows what they made off the live gate there at, at Survivor Series itself. That doesn't include merchandising, commercial fucking rights. At, exactly. Exactly. People want to talk about how WWE's dying. No, they're fucking not. No. They're fine. But these wrestlers need to put guns to Vince's head to make him change his mind. And people like Naomi, people like Ziggler, people like Seth Rollins, they're doing it. It is happening. So shut the fuck up, Smarks, because I'm getting tired of it. <sighs> what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Ribs. How'd that feel? Pretty good. I, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you how that. How'd that feel on your ribs? Not good. Oh, I'm dying. I'm fucking dying, Jeff. Jesus Christ. Don't uh, die on the. Don't die on it on air. I know, right? <sighs> oh, okay. So <laughs> after that, we get a raw, raw rebound where we see the entire Hulk Hogan Halloween. Uh, Halloween. Ho Ho Hogan's Holiday Spectacular. Yeah, I fast forwarded through that. Yeah, the fast forward, so did I. Naomi's walking in the back talking to Jimmy Uso. They do their Ho Uso crazy and their little weird, weird hand shaky thing and kiss. It's cute. But neither one of them are very convincing. Like, they're married. Shouldn't they be convincing us that they're married? Because they seem right. so awkward talking to each look other. A little more natural. <laughs> Just a little think. bit, right? You would think. But they're not. It's very weird. It's like they're strangers when they get on camera together. Very, very strange. Uh, did you notice our truth is rocking his uh, little rap again? He's been doing that for a couple months now. On and off, but not consistently. You know, when he's actually been on TV. Yeah, yeah. Which is very rare. Bring but... back heel our truth. I know. Little Jimmy. I fucking love was... crazy our truth. That was Oh my god, that was great. It was great, and then they just crushed it. Crushed it. Cena broke it. Cena broke his fucking thing. Uh, 
R Truth comes out for the match with Adam Rose. Uh, Adam Rose him. has the rosebuds with him, but sends him doesn't do the whole crowd surfing thing, and you can see something is different about Adam Rose. He it seems like he uh, put more eyeliner on. Yeah, yeah, he he's got to stay away from the smoky eye syndrome. But yeah, he uh, he he works a decent little three four minute match with R Truth, and then gets the win mm-hmm. after his little party foul thing. Which, by the way, I don't know if a lot of people realize this or not. About four months ago, both maybe even a little bit longer than that, both him and Ambrose were doing the same maneuver as a finisher. Dirty Deeds got changed into a double arm DDT, but before it was an invert, it was a front facing DDT like Adam Rose does. And. Uh, Ambrose's was a little different because he like brought he brought the guy's head in. He close. brought a little bit, but I mean they're essentially the same move. Yeah, and I find it interesting that they changed Ambrose's finisher and not Adam Rose's. Yeah, I just I, something I don't know why I just found it interesting. Yeah. So Rose wins, and then we get to see more fucking heel Adam Rose. Where he just he he's just not doing anything with the rosebuds anymore. I fucking like that. I really 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 want to see more heel rose. I like this. Mm-hmm. I think they could take it some really cool places, and the guy can fucking go in the ring. What do you think, Adam Rose? Well, I didn't like face Adam Rose. I thought he looked like a little dingleberry <laughs> hopping around the ring. But you know, I, I'm very interested in seeing heel Adam Rose. Yeah, I think I think it has potential. It has potential, and then they can make the bunny whoever they want and then have a little mm. feud with him. So There you go. There you go. United States Championship match. Dean Ambrose is the surprised contestant on The Price is Right. No, he gets to take on... Okay, so yeah, Dean Ambrose, th- this was the best match of the night, I felt. Uh, it wasn't spectacular, but it was the most entertaining match of the evening. What do you think? Yeah, if you're going to give it to one of the matches, I guess you can give it to that one. Yeah, I mean, it didn't blow me away or anything, but no. at least Rusev did more than the fucking super kick. Yes. You know what's becoming one of my favorite moves, though? What? When Dean Ambrose does his elbow drop line? on the standing oh. person. Elbow drop on a standing person? Yeah. He, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, where, where they're standing up, they're still standing, and he deli- I've never seen a guy deliver a macho man, savage fucking elbow drop on a standing person it's fucking interesting it looks terrible but i like it i don't know why yeah yeah uh so oh yeah after it looked like they were going to do a count out uh victory for ambrose or a double count out bray wyatt surprises and comes out interferes which is weird because this was this made me this is what made me think Bray Wyatt was actually hurt by the way on Raw, because they did record this before that Raw, and mm-hmm. uh, I knew that he interfered, yet he was taken out on an ambulance on Raw, but not on television. It was after, so that was probably just for the TV crowd. Because everything that I've read shows Bray Wyatt is not hurt. He's he's yeah, not a- actually hurt. Uh, yeah, that, you know that's what I've been hearing too throughout the uh, throughout the week. Yeah. You know, uh, I think uh, you and uh, Cronin broke uh, right after Raw went off the air. Right after you guys did your show, uh, that Wyatt was hurt. Yeah, I thought I thought he was. Uh, you know, this report from the live crowd was that it looked legit, and it was just a weird spot to do it in. But apparently, it was just to. Send the crowd home happy, which says a lot about us as wrestling fans. How do we send them happy, Vince? Send them out in an ambulance. They'll love it. I guess that's how they go. Uh, So after the interference, the DQ, once again, they just go to this extreme chairs getting thrown in the ring type of angle with Wyatt and Ambrose. Where are they going with this? Why is this I, over, I don't Jeff? Know. Explain it to me. I have no idea. I don't know what more you can do with this. I mean, you know, it, you you had the good build up, and it could have ended at Survivor Series. Fucking a right, it could have. It could have ended there. Like all the build up towards that match was really good, 
And then after Survivor Series, it's just the same thing over and over. Yeah, I mean, look, at the very least, let's just have them in a regular match. We don't need the gimmick stuff because it's starting to feel, and I don't want to use these two wrestlers, but it's the closest thing I can come to. It seems like they're trying to make it like the Undertaker-Mankind feud. You know, like where they just did horrendous shit to each other. It was a boiler room match and a barrier live match. And it was all hell in a cell. It was just about extreme. And it, it these guys don't need to do that, you know. Mm-mm. They have good in-ring chemistry, even though the matches are kind of redundant. But maybe they're redundant because people tend to forget when you put all these weapons into a match, you really limit what you can do in the ring. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm i ready to see this one go. What about you? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I agree. Jimmy Uso and The Miz up next. Uh, Miz Dow doing his thing that he always does. Hilarious as always. Uh, getting a little tired of it, though, to be honest. I am. I'd like to see something happen with this. But the interesting thing is, once again, The Miz doing everything in the world to make whoever he's in the ring with look like a million bucks. Yeah, Miz is doing a real good job. It's I Maybe I shouldn't sound so surprised that week in, week out, I'm having to say the same thing about the Miz, but I am because I was so used to mediocrity. But the guy is really working his ass off, and he made Jimmy Uso look really good in this match. Or yes, is that just me? No, Uso looked awesome. He, 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 they did the uh, try to do the handshake angle, you know, the handshake gimmick that that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy just Jimmy looks like you know, to me it looks like Miz might have actually slept with Naomi because Jimmy really looks like he wants to beat his ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he really, yeah he goes after him in these matches and they have good chemistry. Yeah, uh, Jimmy's uh, playing. He looks great in the ring. You know, just his expressions, they look great, like, in the ring. But, like, it seems like backstage, it just goes yeah. it goes away. Where do you think this is going? Is this just to build more tension with the tag team division? Or with all the emphasis they're putting on Jimmy, is this a breakup angle with him and his brother eventually when all of this shit comes to a head between him and Naomi? Because we know it's going to. Uh, I, like, I don't know. There's a couple different ways you can go with this like you just said the breakup angle the tension between him and Miz could you know escalate and they could keep going for the tag team titles yeah because I mean who else is going to go for the tag team titles at this point the ascension comes up on Monday yeah but are they going to be face or they're going to be heel right they're going to be heel yeah but yeah but I mean only half of the tag team champions are heel so that's true (laughs) that's true uh, I don't know what they're going to do with the Ascension with this Legion of Doom gimmick they've given them. I, I have no idea what they're going to do with them. But, I, yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird because it seems like they're picking Jimmy to be their guy. It seems like Jimmy might be the one to be getting a big singles push. Or this could be just a swerve, and maybe Jay is going to end up turning on Jimmy because of all of this attention he's getting. Yeah. I mean, you could go three or four different ways with this. Yeah, it, it's quite – it's been a while be, since think, we've had this many talking points about a tag team match, you know? Yeah, and I think I'd be okay with it, any way they would go with it. Yeah, I don't mind seeing it. It's not offending me, you know what I mean? No. Yeah, yeah. So coming off of that, which was a pretty good match itself, uh, the main event. And I was like, okay, this is going to blow, but it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It was like the rest of the show, decent. Yeah. Nothing great. Nothing, nothing great. great. Nothing one nothing that made me want to turn it off. Yeah. Uh I mean Roman Reigns he had a little bit of an extended uh ring presence towards the end. He he pulled off more than his regular maneuvers, but he's showing what they want him to do, he's doing well. And mm-hmm. that's important. That that'll get him to Mania. What he's going to do at WrestleMania, I have no fucking idea at this point. Because there's about six or seven things that are going on in the back right now that can dictate a lot of changes. And nobody has an idea of what's going to happen at Mania right now. We have an idea of what we think is going to happen because... you got Sting and Triple H. I mean... That's not even a guarantee right now. And it should would, be because the way yeah. they booked Survivor Series, you would think. But Vince is still being Vince. And I talked about this on the uh, show that I did earlier today. 
he he wants Undertaker Sting. Like Vince wants Undertaker Sting with a passion, and it makes no fucking sense. No, now now that the streak's gone, it makes. Not only Absolutely. even if the streak was there, when you take off your fan hat, and this is not this is not directed at you, it's directed at everybody, and you get over just the two names that are in the match, it, this will be a fucking terrible fucking matchup. It will be god awful if the Sting and Undertaker fight fight each other. I, I just I, I can't see it being a good match. Can you? I mean Not really, but I mean the I mean, Undertaker, you know, you, he can pull something out. I mean, he's only doing it one night a year. He, I don't know. I, See, I still think he could pull something out if he would go. Here's the thing on that. The Brock Lesnar match, whether or not he got hurt early in the match, I have no idea, but it was Which a I fucking, believe he did. It was a train Which wreck. Which I believe he did. I believe he did. The match was a train wreck. It was an it, absolute it catastrophe. Was, it was horrible. It was. I watched it. I mean, that's why I believe yeah. he got hurt. It was horrible. But, okay, so maybe you give him a pass there. So then what you do is you go and you look at the WrestleMania before that. You say, okay, CM Punk and him. CM Punk made fucking Undertaker look like a rock star in that match. Taker did not look particularly well. He was in there with the the best in-ring performer at the time in CM Punk. So really can't say anything about uh, Undertaker's ability then. So what do you do after that? You look back as far back as you can go. Let's look at the four previous WrestleMania matches before that. They were with two with Triple. HBK and two with Triple H. And those were guys that could make The Undertaker look better than he probably did. The Undertaker's got nothing left, Jeff, and he hasn't had anything I mean, left for a is, long time, what is he, brother. He's years old. Yeah, he's 48, something like that. Sting's 56. Sting cannot hide his discrepancies. He cannot hide what The Undertaker is lacking. It will be one of the worst matches, not in WrestleMania history. If these two fucking lock up, it will be one of the worst matches in wrestling history because their names are only going to carry them so far. It, it's just I'm I'm mortified that Vince is going to get his way. Maybe Triple H needs to put a gun to his head. Maybe. But they've already started the booking for Triple H and Sting. Triple H can hide Sting's deficiencies, and they're more kind of similar wrestlers anyway. The Undertaker and Sting are not similar wrestlers at all. They're just two old, broken-down bodies. Triple H can still go a little bit, at least enough to make a match with Sting look interesting. Do whatever you want with The Undertaker. If you want to do something with The Undertaker, what I proposed earlier is have Brock Lesnar drop the title at the Rumble, which is what I was suggesting happening, and then have Taker and Brock too. Have Taker get his revenge, which honestly makes mm-hmm. more sense than anything. Have yes. Taker come back and get his revenge on Lesnar. That makes sense. No title implication, no nothing. Because nothing else makes sense. Giving him to Cena doesn't make sense because Cena doesn't, uh, Undertaker doesn't have anything Cena wants anymore. He doesn't have the streak. He's got nothing. Bray Wyatt doesn't even make that much sense because even a victory over the Undertaker at this point, because he's not beating an a undefeated guy at WrestleMania anymore. Now he's beating a 48-year-old legend who doesn't have anything left. So how much does it really do for Bray Wyatt? Nothing. Nothing. But if Undertaker and Brock Lesnar go and Undertaker beats him and gets his revenge, now you got something. And no matter how bad that match may be, you would have people in the crowd satisfied that Undertaker beat him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a selling point. It's a selling point. My God. That match with the proper buildup starting at the Royal Rumble, of course, because maybe you don't even have Rollins cash in. Maybe you just have Undertaker fuck Lesnar out of the title. You know? Maybe mm-hmm. that's what you do. You just have him fuck him over. And that's how you get them to Mania. If you do that, that match alone, regardless of anything else, which there's some other potential good matches, that will sell you WrestleMania to 85% of the people out there. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Rant over. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, yeah, back to the main event here. Uh, show wasn't even all that bad in this match. Ziggler and Seth really you got, show. You I, got, uh, well, go ahead, you got big slow. You got big slow chance. Yeah, there was a lot of big slow chances. Uh, ch- chance, yeah, there was. Uh, 
when all this is said and done, I really want to see an extended program with Ziggler and uh, Seth Rollins. That has the potential to be go. very, very good. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. What would be interesting if they decide not to do anything else with Ziggler between now and Mania and they don't put him in another big feud with, like, Randy Orton or something like that, how about a fucking Intercontinental title versus Money in the Bank uh, briefcase match, ladder match at WrestleMania between Dolph Ziggler and fucking Seth Rollins? Putting both on the line? Yeah. Put them both up there. Put I the, like that. Put the title in the briefcase. Put the Intercontinental title in or wrap the fucking briefcase with the title and hang that from a fucking ladder and let those like two that. guys steal the fucking show. I really like that. Yeah, I I'm still upset booking. they took the money. I'm still upset they took the Money in the Bank ladder match out of WrestleMania. Yeah, I, I, me too. Me too. I thought it was a good place for it. I, I mean, you only got you it. only got one title. I mean, I guess you know with the two separate titles, yeah. it, it kind of made sense for the pay per view. But now you only got one title, so yeah. Now there's only one. You don't, you know, so you might as well have it at WrestleMania. That's where it made sense. And who knows? Maybe it will come back. I mean, Jericho coming back. Who knows? Maybe it will. Maybe it will. No idea. No idea. So that basically wraps up uh, SmackDown. What would you give SmackDown? Five. Yeah, five and a half. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. And, and it's not It's not like it's a bad five. I'm not giving it a bad five. It's a relatively no. good five. No. But, you know, it just wasn't spectacular. No, nothing great, nothing horrible. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, anything else in wrestling you'd like to talk about before we get up out of here, before my ribs cave in and my chest makes me die on camera? No, I, I just uh, – I'd like to say that I was uh... – I was really into the Cena Rollins match on Raw. I thought that was really good. <laughs> it was a good fucking fight. It was not bad. I was kind of surprised at how good the matchup was. Uh, opening the card too. It's kind of nice that less and less it seems like we're get, we're not getting Cena in the main event as much. Which is which is good. Yeah. Spread it, it out. Good. Change it up. Sure, but it could also be because they know they're putting him in the main event at. Royal Rumble and all that, and maybe they're just trying to hide that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, you know what? It, it That's not going to be the main event. It shouldn't be the main event. The Royal Rumble should be the main event, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I have no idea. Go ahead and plug yourself, my friend. Okay. I got a YouTube channel myself. Go to YouTube, search Grand Slam 87, uh, post a bunch of video game stuff and talk about random stuff. Haven't been able to the last couple days because these jerks have... Uh, I've been attacking Sony and PSN has, be, has been shut down, so I've been haven't uh, really been able to play online. Yeah. But uh, if you like to play PlayStation Four with me when it eventually comes back up for me, my PlayStation ID is also at Grand Slam eighty seven, and my Twitter is also at Grand Slam eighty seven. It's his Twitter. It's his Facebook. It's his uh, probably not his Facebook, but it's his not YouTube. It's his fucking home address. He uses it as his passwords for his cell phones. He is Grand Slam eighty seven. You want to talk about Grand Slam 87? I am Grand Slam 87, JR. I, I, I love that. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh, that fucking hurt. <laughs> oh. Oh. Also, if, uh, if any of you out there want to you know, get in better shape, uh, make a New Year's resolution, want to get yourself in better shape, I can help you out with that. So if you don't, uh, don't feel... Uh, yeah, don't feel overwhelmed. You can, you can. Don't feel overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. hit hit me up on uh, Twitter or something, and I'll gladly talk to you about and that. And he's not bullshit. He will help you. The Jeff is all about this stuff. So hit him up. Hit him up. Uh, make sure you're checking out every, all of our friends, all of our buddies out there. All uh, as one person said it, all the people that we suck dicks on all the time. The- yeah, yeah, yeah. So what would you call those? That person who uh, doesn't like how we treat each other. Oh, that, that, that that's really easy. I would call them this. It's playing. I try to live my life, live my life every day. Keep out of strife. Come what may I try to do unto others as I'd have them do to me. But it can't be done for everyone and now it's plain to see. You are a cunt. Your 
Yeah, that doesn't get old. <laughs> that doesn't get old. You are a cunt, sir. Anybody out there who doesn't like it. Uh, but yeah, make sure you check out Joe Cronin on both of his channels, Spectrum Gaming, Gaming 617, and of course, Joe Cronin Show on uh, YouTube. Tommy C., the great Tommy C. over at Shot From The Point. Uh, Shot From The Point Live, I believe, returns on Sunday. I'm not sure. Do you, do you know about that? I don't know if it does or not. That's a good question. It may or may not. Stay tuned for update on that. But if it does, it'll be 3 p.m. tomorrow, which is Sunday. So make sure you check Eastern that Standard out. Time. Eastern Standard Time, of course. Other than that, make sure you like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Thank you once again, Jeff, for joining me. You are the man. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it. And we are out of here. We will see you next time right here on Between the Ropes on Dead on Day Productions. We're out.